In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the Spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm Gene Bailey, glad you're here today. We're gonna to continue our talking about revivals, awakenings, uh, everything that God's doing. But with me today, a very special interview, Elson Bennett, thank you, sir, for joining yes, sir. today. Good to have you back. I want you, let's go back in time uh, because there are a lot of people that may, you've been on the show before, obviously, but people that don't really remember, we have a lot of new people, but let's, so let's go back in time in the story of how you came connected with Kenneth Copeland and why are you sitting here today? How did that all come together? Oh my gosh, that's a long story, but you know, Brother Copeland back in 1972, him and Jerry Savelle came out for the first Navajo Believers Convention, wow. Faith Convention. And at the time, I was probably like five or six years old. So you gotta understand, I'm, I'm raised in, uh, on the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. And back in the 70s, there was absolutely nothing out there. And I remember my, in my time as a child, we had wagons very few vehicles, you know, and, and, and so, but at that time, I was just intrigued with preachers, you know, as a young child. My father was a uh, associate pastor at White Post. That's a place that Kenneth Copeland and Jerry came, Brother Copeland. And so White Post was just a new church at the time, just birth. And here I am on the reservation. My father, Eugene Bennett, was an associate pastor, and he's now in heaven. And then there's another man, Kenneth Begishi, was the pastor and the founder of White Post Church. Now I'm White Post, and then we have ministers in and out all the time, you know. And so, but this time there was something different. As a child, most of the kids had heroes like Superman, you know, Batman and so forth, but my heroes were preachers. And I would watch them, preach, I would watch them get off that stage and, you know, watch them all afternoon and follow them around. <laughs> Sometimes I probably annoyed them, but, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things I did was when I got home, I would get a, a, a stick and there, some rope and wrap the stick around that, a rope around the stick and tie it and then put the rope back here like I'm holding a mic. And I would go and hurt sheep and I would stand on top of the, the rocks while the sheep are grazing and I would stand up there and I start preaching to the sheep. And this is a, as a child. And then I remember the Lord saying, there's a day coming. And I heard this loud and clear. There's a day coming. You, if you look out and there was trees everywhere. I mean, as far as your eyes can see, he goes, that's how many people you're going to be ministering to. And as a child. And then so when Brother Copeland and Cherry Savelle came, there was a supernatural attraction. And they're in the middle of the, the revival that was taking place at White Post. They showed up. And when they showed up, a lot of our Navajo people were coming out of the, what we call the Native American traditions, the Navajo traditions. And the, I remember my father and Kenneth Begishi going from one Hogan to another Hogan. Hogan is a, just like a mud hut made out of logs. Under there, there's logs and mud over it. And that's what the Navajos lived in. And so they would go from one, one um, group of house to another group of house and, and just reach the loss. And then they would bring them into the church and that's how the White Post started. But when that was happening, one of the things that I remember back then that the people were so intrigued was the message that was brought forth because it was so different than all these other messages. And the message was, a cut, the, the message was on faith mm -hmm. because when they came out of the Navajo beliefs, their traditional beliefs, they believe in the power of words in, the, in that realm, in that belief. So when they heard the, the word of faith, they just opened up their hearts and they were just re receiving by faith and because they knew that the power of words meant life to them. 
And, and when they heard that, that uh, word of faith message, they connected with him. And then as a child, while they were there, I followed them all afternoon. Everywhere they went, and they, you know, I remember the, even the trailer that they put them in. And I would sit outside the trailer just listening. Just wanted to hear, just wanted to see, okay, because I'm going to go home and I'm going to go imitate. And so, and I ran home. When, by the time I got home, I used, I used to have a bed sheet, king-size bed sheet. I just put some sticks under there and, and nailed them down to the ground. And that was my tent right. as a child. And I would preach in there, copying Brother Copeland How about and Jerry that? Savelle. That's and wild. so, and I remember even at that age, you know, there was people that would get rocks like turquoise, get rocks. They would, the, 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 the money um, currency wasn't even on the reservation. Here and there, but it wasn't on the reservation. People didn't know how to, what they were. So they would bring rocks, they would bring stones to the reservation, and they would put it in the offering. And um, I remember people doing that, and they were so excited about sowing a seed. Right. They were so excited about, okay, this is the beginning. And at that time, I was there where there was nothing, where there was, we were out there in the middle of the reservation, no signal of any radio or anything like that. And God chose that place. And out of that place, we sowed rocks. And out of that to today, we have hundreds of churches that came out of White Post. And now we have another, this is our second generation of White Post Church now. And so we uh, have a younger generation that's running the church now. And the church is thriving, it's moving forward, and they're doing, adding on to the last generation. But guess who's still there? Brother Copeland. Right. Here we are, second generation, preaching the gospel on the Navajo reservation. My father went home to be with the Lord. And Brother Begishi, he's still out there uh, in White Post. But I, uh, I tell you what, you know, he's, he just loves the Navajo people. Um, he, you know, he's been with the Navajo people for generations. And, you know, one, one thing with Brother Copeland is I know his heart is with the Native American people, not just Navajo. Right, right. And so one of the things that we did years ago was we, we honored him for the first time. And we had a family sacred naming ceremony for him. And we allowed him to come into our tribe. And we gave him a name. And so we had the Navajo tribe, many tribes. It wasn't just Navajo. It was, you know, Lakota Sioux. We had uh, one of our uh, pastors, a spiritual leader that came down from uh, Rapid City just for that ceremony. And he did the honor song for him. And Quincy Goodstar is his name. And uh, it was an honor where the people came, the elderlies that knew him from the last generation. The original people that were there came out that night. And then you have the younger generation. And that night was so special because we, the, the name we given him was prayed over by elderlies. So what they do is they go out and they pray over what name to give a person. Is very special. And once the elders come back and they say, they, okay, I believe this is going to be this name. I believe that one person may have a part of a name, another person have another part. And they may all come to a place of agreement, okay, this is the name. They'll say the name one time and they'll never mention it again until the day of that ceremony. So when he was out there and, um, we did this ceremony for him, I believe, I believe it was uh, 2019 at the Healing of the Nations mm -hmm. Motorcycle Rally that we do on the Navajo Reservation. And um, the name that we gave him is Wambli Hoashtay. Wambli Hoashtay means Good Voice Eagle. So it's a Lakota and, uh, and given from Lakota Nation to the Navajo people. And the Navajo people honored him with it. And so, you know, it was a name that is very special to, um, to our native people. 
So, you know, and then the same thing with Jerry Savelle. We gave him a name as well. And, you know, just honoring these men that have been faithful right. to bring the word of faith into these Indian nations for generations. Mm. And without hesitation, without, um, you know, any question, they were there. Anytime, you know, the doors were open, you know, they were there. And, and they're still there. And, you know, there's so many things that happened through the years, you know, and uh, but they never have got to the place where they said, you know, I think we're, we're going to stop coming. You know, they keep coming now. It's like I said, it's been 52 years Amazing. of relationship. Yeah. That's wonderful. What a, tell us about what's going on um, during that season till now. I mean, there's, there's an awakening that's going on. Tell, tell the people what's happening. What, what are you seeing happening? Oh, from the last generation. You know, the last generation couldn't read or write. We got, they got the Bible. Oh, they love the Bible. They, they, they would just sit there and say, I wish I could read it. And I remember one elderly, he would sit there and just look at the Bible and say, man, I wish I could read this, but I can't. And he would put, you know, my grandfather did the same thing too, was he would put his hand on the red letters. And he wow. said, that's the red letters has power. The mm. red letters has power. And, wow. And, but they couldn't read it though. They carried it because that was life to them. This is, yeah. this is life. We want to know. But if you study the history of the American Indians, Jesus was always revealing himself to the That's American right. Indians. Before any settlers and missionaries came forth, Jesus was already introducing himself to the tribe. So when they received the Bible, oh, that was a great gift hmm. to the Navajo nation and the Navajo people. And so when they received that Bible, they would open it and they would just, they didn't know how to read it, just put it in and just hold, hold it and love it and say, this is life. Yeah. We actually finally got the book. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, many of them. And they would have prayer meetings all night long. And you know, I remember sitting in those prayer meetings and I was a child and they, and they would bring me to these prayer meetings. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> Yeah. They would bring me in and they would, they, you know, they would say, stop running around. So they would tie me to a chair or something. And I'd just sit there and they'd be going all night long. We would, they would start at, you know, in the evening sometimes. And we didn't get out until the sun came up, like five in the morning, the summers. And we would go walk, walk home early in the morning, but all night long. And there were some uh, missionaries that were non-natives that were there. So there was a language barrier mm -hmm. with some of the elderly that were there, white posts, but somehow they understood each other in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, wow. And so they would pray all night and they were just drawn together and tied together and drawn together. And that's how the whole prayer service started from there. And then you go into, from there they had another, I don't, I don't like the word movement, but they had another move of God to where not only the church began to grow, but they began to plant churches outside of White Post. And so they, you know, they had ministers come out of there. They had churches come out of there. But those churches were started. I'm, I'm saying like 40 churches were started out of that. Now you're talking about 40 churches. You know, each, each church probably ran 100 people at least. Mm -hmm. And so... Now this generation, a lot of the older generation are moving on home. And now this generation taking over those churches, the younger generation. So this is our second year, uh, our second, excuse me, second generation hmm. of the word of faith. Isn't that amazing? The word of God, yeah. Wow. On that reservation. And so now what's happening is everybody's upgrading to digital, of course. Everybody's going into satellite. Everybody's going into... You know, and the sure. new era, you know, and so now we know how to read the Word of God. Now we know how to understand the Bible. And so now God is teaching us how we could reintroduce the gospel to our Native American people. Maybe that were wounded by many missionaries, you know, because a lot of things bad happened right. through right. the government and through the missionary work. But there were some good missionaries as well, you know, and we honor those. And so, you know, now it feels like that we are really going back into these 
different parts, you could say different parts of the Native American world. You have your art market, you have your powwow, you have right. your rodeo, and so all these different world that Native American go to. Now we're going back into those and reintroducing Jesus to them. Not only that, because of religion and what religion has done on these reservations, it has paralyzed the church. Mm -hmm. And so therefore now we've got to go back into some of these churches and reintroduce them as well to Christ. And so to where religion has really um, uh, put blinders on them to where they can't see really the true gospel. And so I think that's the generation that we're looking at now to the present day. How can people, and I, I can just feel the people that are watching now, they're listening to this and it's, and it's how, do, how should the non-American Indian pray? How should we, what is it that, that, what direction would you give us to pray for that, for your, for your world, the Navajo Nation and all of America? All of the Indian Nation. You know, one of the things that you could pray <clears throat> is that there be, first of all, an awakening. A real awakening because you have your church world that they believe they understand Jesus, but let them understand it in a greater light. The eyes of their understanding be open and enlightened. And then we have another group over here that say they're keeping their old ways, traditional ways. Right. And they believe in Jesus, but they don't see him as a savior. They see God, they believe in God. They see God as a creator, forever spirit. Right. But now they need to know him as a savior. Right. And so now we have this, both worlds, non-Christians and the Christians need an awakening. And that's what to pray for is, you know, and, and as you go into these Indian nation, connect with, you know, connect with uh, ministries that are already there that way you're connecting with what God is already doing among the people. So your, your ministry, Covenant of Faith, explain what you do and, and, and how people can connect with you. We do so much. I mean, we do, you know, we, we, you know, our ministry is on the Navajo Reservation, which is in Arizona, right outside the Grand Canyon. And we have a church there. And then through the church, we, we, we do food ministry, we do, um, you know, motorcycle rally ministry, many other outreaches that we do to the youth and kids and so forth. <clears throat> and so one of the things that we really, um, that's different than most churches that are doing, because one of the things we found out was Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday wasn't working. And we haven't seen the numbers go up in our church. Right. And so we're like, okay, you know, one Sunday we get a good crowd, and then the next three Sundays it's just trickle down. It's just quiet. So what is going on? And so one of the things we noticed in our, in our ministry on the Navajo Reservation was that, hey, you know, maybe we should start praying about doing something different. And so somebody had sent me this uh, article on, you know, the Bible being a tribal book, and I start reading about it. And I, one of the questions while I was reading that, one of the questions I had was, when did the, tri the Bible turn into a Western book? And that was you know, because even for me, when I was in Bible school, I would look at the Bible as, this is a tribal book. I see covenant. I see blood. I see, you know, even, even the communion table. I, I see that. That's, that's all tribal. Right. You know, that's from my world. And, and so, <clears throat> but when I was reading this article, one of the things it said was, you know, most of the tribes in the Bible, their thought life was what they call block logic. And then the Westernized society, they more think as a step logic. And I go, maybe that's what's wrong. We're trying to bring step logic into the tribal people that don't even think that way. Hmm. So therefore, I was like, Lord, you know, show me this. And I, we, you know, as we began to pray, and things began to come out one at a time. And what we started doing was, okay, let's start praying. And the Lord again began to give us answers. You know, I noticed that these people only showed up for main events. The healing of the nation comes, 
men's meeting, women's meeting, they're faithful. Man, they're there to help, you know. But when it comes to Sunday, Sunday, Wednesday, Wednesday, they weren't there, you know. And so we started doing, okay, let's just try this, you know. And so we started doing the special meetings. And our church began to church, not the building, the church people began to grow. Mm -hmm. The numbers began to go up. And then we're like, this is, this is how they think. This is all these years we've been missing, is that this is how they think is, is, is block logic. Explain block logic. When you say that, what does that mean? Block logic means is to where we can say, you know, like, for example, this cup. You know, the step logic would say you got to do one, two, three steps to get to the cup. Block logic means this is your goal. This is where we need to be. And there's many ways to get there mm -hmm. without uh, there's only three steps to get there. Right. So that's the way they think. And so a lot of it, when it comes to like a, the step logic, you can plan really good. And you're on time, you're on a schedule in the step logic. But when it comes to block logic, you're on timing, if you can understand that. Right. So, you know, they go, they live by the sun. And they, even back in the early years of uh, White Post, I remember, you know, they would try to advertise a service at 7 o'clock. Nobody's there at 7 o'clock. Because they weren't living by the time. They were living by timing, which is when the sun's going down, I'll be there. I'll be done with my yeah. chores. What do you see happening next? I mean, you're con I mean, obviously, in what you just described, things have grown so much and duplicated. Now you're, you're into multiplication and new generations now are taking over. What do you think is next when it comes to... Uh, this ministry like this? Uh, one of the things that um, I believe that's coming next is the unity of the Native Americans. I'm talking about root, the grassroot people. Right. On the reservation with the non-Natives that are outside the reservation. Because right now, I believe there's a great divide between these two. Why? Because, it's, you know, they're their definition, the Native American definition of prosperity is a little different than the, the, the Western right. thinking of prosperity. So somewhere we're going to have to come together and then even the Bible, the way they see the Bible, the Native Americans see the Bible is way different than the way the American people see the Bible. So we, somewhere we have to come to a place and say, hey, we need to meet here. And that's one of the things that our ministry does is we, be, we became a bridge to both worlds. We can bring, you know, the, the mentality. And the great thing about uh, our ministry is that we, we bring these two worlds together to where they, we can, they can understand one another and work together. Right. And I think this, this time, this generation right now, they need that unity of brothers in Christ to work together, whether it's on the reservation or off the reservation, and where there can, they can, there's understanding to both worlds. Because one of the things that has happened and has really damaged our church is, <clears throat> I'm talking about our, 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 when I say church is the global church. Right. The only thing that really damaged among the American Indians is because it, that wasn't done. We never learn each other, so therefore, this phrase came up from the American Indians. That's a white man's book, a white man's religion. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of it was, but <clears throat> this, is the, this is the part where I'm talking about is we get rid of that and say, this is our book. Yeah. You know, from both sides, you know, and, and to where the, our natives can begin to accept the Bible and really bring, because the Bible, once we accept the true gospel, the Bible is the one that's going to bring in our true identity. Amen. Well, that's so true. And when we get our true identity, and through that identity, our Native American music that we were told not to sing, our language that we were told not to speak in our church, our Native songs and arts that we're told, they were all pagan religion. And uh, 
when we, this unity takes place and understanding takes place and we give voice to one another and now we can have a group of people that have received their true identity back and now they can receive the true songs, the true music and the arts and the culture and to where we can have both cultures working together. And I believe that's what we're going to see in heaven. Amen. I agree with that. You know, we're, we're at the end of this program, but would you look at that camera and, and pray for the people? Yeah, today I want to pray for you, wh whoever you are listening out there, you know, and I really want to encourage you to steady one another, especially as a body of Christ, to learn one another. You know, one thing that Jesus said in his word was, learn of me. And so I believe that's one of the things that, you know, we would do in the church is learn one another. We are the body of Christ. So I want to pray for you right now that our eyes will be open and light. And Father, we thank you for all those people out there that are watching. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the eyes of their understanding be open and lightened, that they may know what is the hope of all of our calling and that we may finish this race with honor, that we may finish this race together, honoring the name, honoring the blood, honoring the word, honoring the covenant. And Father God, that this would be a great, strong army together. And for sure, Father, I pray that we will see true unity. And out of that unity, we will see your glory. Father God, come out of that. And Father, to bless the world to get people saved and healed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So how can, uh, how can people partner up with Covenant of Faith? Well, Covenant of Faith, um, you can you know, go to our website, um, cofaz.org. Cofaz.org. And they can partner there, and then uh, you'll find all of our information on there. You'll see uh, our phone number, you can contact the ministry, how you can really, how you can. There's another thing that we do, we call it reservation education. And we bring people to the reservation and we educate them on the mentality of, you know, we're talking about block oh, logic good. and step logic. Right. And then we, we go through the government buildings, the, you know, all the schools and er, everything. We talk about what's the, what's the problems on the reservation and how can we fix them together, not just, right. you know, covenant faith problem, their native ministry, but all together as a body of Christ. How can we fix these nations and bring healing to the nations? Thank you, Elson. Thank, thank you. you. So good to have you, you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're going to follow. Uh, go to the website. Check it out. And, you know, we, we must be aware of our brothers and sisters around us. And, uh, you know, it, it's a great ministry. And I'm so proud to work for a place with Brother Copeland, who is very loyal. And he's stayed, very loyal. stayed true and has stayed the path. Thanks for watching Revival Radio Praise TV. Me. We'll see you next time.